want to start this uh, brief survey uh, over the early days with the uh, IASC with the San Diego lunch meeting. And the credit should be given to Dr. Jim Sundberg, who was then president of SCAR. He was also the first chair of the U.S. Arctic Research Commission. Participants at this SCAR lunch meeting uh, were all countries having uh, an Arctic research component. They were there for discussing Antarctic research, but man, many of those also had an Arctic research activity. So the conclusion of this meeting was that uh, we should uh, start up by inviting to a second meeting, more formal meeting, uh, with representatives for Arctic countries, although Arctic countries were not defined. And the idea was to explore the possibility for creating an um, International Science Committee for the Arctic. It really had a very interesting beginning because of the Gorbachev speech in, uh, I think it was 1987, where he made this speech about <coughs> we should uh, treat the Arctic as a place of peace, we should not shoot, shoot wars and things, but it should be work together in that fashion. But then he said there should be two organizations formed. There should be an international intergovernmental forum and there should be an international scientific forum. First of all, IASC was founded by Arctic countries and um, uh, the non-Arctic countries felt themselves excluded. There was some demarche uh, in uh, the Arctic countries. The embassies and the ambassadors were pushing it and uh, finally in 1990, in fact, the first regular uh, meeting of IASC, uh, I think four or five non-Arctic countries were present and that was in 1990. Bob Correll, he undertook to find the solution and uh, there was nothing happened or we didn't hear anything for quite quite a long time until they came up with, with the, uh, the idea of the regional board. And this was because to and the regional board was supposed to take care of the interests of the Arctic countries. And um, uh, after that it was of course uh, more or less uh, settled, so we had this meeting, funding meeting in, in Resolute in uh, what is it, March 1980, 1990, and um, then the st things started rolling. And of course, the first president was Fred Roots, and I succeeded him in uh, 93, or then to 93. IAS came in as an extremely important time in Arctic history and political history. When uh, before that there had been a vacuum, but suddenly the Arctic was opened up for collaboration, and IAS ensured that collaboration would happen. I think the achievements, the major achievements that are explicit are the big assessments, the researchers, um, the planning exercises, but particularly something like the Arctic Climate Impact Assessment. And my personal belief, and this is a very, very strong statement, but my personal belief is the Arctic Climate Impact Assessment changed the world. The uh, International Arctic Science Committee and the Arctic Monitoring and Assessment Program are two organizations that goes back to the early days of, or the late days of the 1980s. Um, the speech of Gorbachev in 1987, we both are product of that speech in one way. Um, IASC was established back in 1990, Arctic Monitoring and Assessment Program, part of the Arctic Environment Protection Strategy was established in 1991 in Rovaniemi. Over the 20, 25 years that we have been in operation, Arctic Monitoring and Assessment Program and IASC has worked together on several projects and the most significant is of course the Arctic Climate Impact Assessment where we worked together and delivered the first really significant assessment of the climate change in the Arctic. The first meeting I went to was the ICAP, which was the International Conference on, on, on Arctic Resource Planning, the first one, and it was uh, held in Hanover. In the United States. 
And I always remember when I came to that ICAP conference that I didn't know that uh, what I was going doing there or, or what I what I asked was. And I very quickly found out that these there was a lot of scientists. But I noticed that there were very few scientists within the social sciences. And I said to myself, okay, if you cannot take part in this uh, ICAP, you need to know more about what the social sciences are doing. And I remember I went to their meeting and there were only five or six people there. Uh, since then, the social sciences have become a very big part of IASC, which is a very positive thing. I'm the first president of IASC to be elected from the humanities, and I see this in many ways as um, a recognition of the fact that the mainstream of Arctic science is moving on from demonstrating the facts of climate change uh, and towards work on the implications of the changing climate that uh, it will have on the people, on the societies, uh, resources and positive and negative possibilities that open up uh, all over the Arctic now. So I'm hoping that during my presidency I can bring these uh, social science and humanities projects and programs further into the big complex family of the whole of the Arctic science that IASC has been facilitating, helping to facilitate for 25 years. I think IASC does an excellent job of bringing together the international components of Arctic research. Um, its emphasis on a pan-Arctic approach to science has been very valuable. Um, without an organization like IASC, which strives to ensure international collaboration and cooperation, we might be left with individual countries doing their own thing without the benefit of learning and observing from a pan-Arctic perspective. And in that sense, I think IASC has been very successful. Restructuring that took place a few years ago was uh, important. And uh, as then um, chair of the Arctic Ocean Science Board at that time and the merge between AOSB and and um, I ask, in one way, gave the working groups a flying start because you already had uh, then got uh, a working group that was well established, that even was older than uh, I ask itself. Uh, and uh, I think that was helpful for the other groups to see this could function. I was so lucky that I was actually a member of the Arctic Ocean Sciences Board. And when the idea about making this merge of IASC with Arctic Ocean Sciences Board and somehow creating a new structure, I think a number of us sitting in AOSB was a little bit reluctant. But that was the right thing to do. I work uh, here about the 10 years from the Oslo, the, I would say Oslo period and the Stockholm period and the Boston period. During 10 years, it changed a lot. I think uh, uh, I ask uh, do many things for the Arctic colleague. Well, it began in 2004. This was uh, right at the beginning of the time when we were all talking about how the International Polar Year was going to work. You know, the proposal for an IPY had been put to ICSU by Chris Rapley and Robin Bell in 2003. So in 2004, we were all very excited about how to take the International Polar Year forward. And within the SCAR context, I recommended to the Executive Committee that we should start talking to IASC. And so I got in touch with Odd Rogney, and we agreed that we would meet up in the margins of the first IPY meeting in Paris in, I think, March 2004. And so he and I had a, a very good meeting, and a good meeting of the minds about the fact that it would be a good thing to combine the interests of SCAR and IASC in the context of the International Polar Year. IASC as a round table and not as a long oblong table has really allowed the development of international science and I think people are seeing the value of doing that. I think it's allowed for different philosophies and the different ways to do science, people to learn from those. And I also think it's, uh, it's, it's a family, so I think in that sense you don't all get along, 
but you actually uh, will work work together and there's a there's a a history there and I think with that is a forward motion so we see the early careers moving forward their mid careers they're making decisions and then you have the senior scientists advising and I think it's a it's a it's actually a very for the last uh, 20 years 20 or so years it's been uh, has really evolved into a very functioning organization so I started with IS in 2006 almost 10 years ago at a very exciting time IS had just completed the ICAR-2, the preparations for the IPY were in full swing, and I had the report of the IS Review and Strategy Group on my desk. The following 10 years were very busy, but I think also very successful for IS. IS welcomed several new member countries, substantially enlarged the Secretariat, entered into partnerships with a number of organizations, and improved the relationships with ICSU, and the Arctic Council, including its working groups and permanent participants. The Arctic Science Summit Week became the major annual gathering of the Arctic research community, in particular after we had added a science symposium every second year and the Arctic Observing Summit every other year. In 2007, my life changed. I was an Antarctic researcher working in the dry valleys um, in, off of McMurdo Station. And I went to my very first Arctic Science Summit Week. We developed APEX, the Association of Polar Early Career Scientists. That was the very first meeting for APEX. After that, um, IASC, together with SCAR, the Scientific Committee for Antarctic Research, sponsored our organization, as well as many of our activities to make sure that young researchers were not just invited to the party of, of science conferences, but had active roles in leadership. Well, I was president of IASC from 2010 until 2014, and these were pretty exciting years. It was the end of the International Polar Year. We had the two large conferences in Oslo and in Montreal. Um, and that uh, became really the opportunity to start to think about the future. So now we are in the middle of the third International Conference on Arctic Research Planning, ICARP-3, and thinking about the long-term implementation of Arctic research with uh, other organizations. Uh, this started as a proposal for the International Polar Decade. We now think of it as the International Polar Partnership Initiative. We'll see what comes of that, but I ask, as usual, has been at the forefront of trying to look ahead and, and plan future science activities. Mm -hmm.